Hey everyone, it's Sean from Salehu, and in today's video, we're going to go through eight extremely crucial product criteria validation steps that you'll need to follow in order to find a dropshipping product that actually can make profits. These eight factors are used by seven-figure dropshippers, e-commerce entrepreneurs who launch multiple stores per month, and those who rely on dropshipping as their only full-time income. Once again, if this is your first time on the Salehu channel, welcome. Here at Salehu, we are dropshippers and business owners ourselves. And using our knowledge and experience, we have helped hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs grow their online businesses with our e-commerce tools and our expert online education. When choosing a product, try not to fall in love with it too quickly, just because it's cool to you. You'll want to be extremely disciplined in following these eight factors when looking for a profitable dropshipping product. So let's get into it. The first factor that you need to consider is whether there's broad market appeal for the product you are planning to sell. Broad market appeal doesn't mean you are selling to everyone, by the way, because if you are targeting everyone, you are targeting no one. What it means is that the product you have can be used by many people within your niche. An example of a product that does not have a pro broad market appeal would be, say, a vinyl record. Like, that only appeals to a small group of people. And although it is true that the riches are in the niches, going too niche can backfire because only a small group may be interested in it. On the other hand, a multifunctional Bluetooth speaker lamp for adventure enthusiasts will have a broader market appeal. The reason why you want to have a broad market appeal for your product is because it allows you to test different audiences. With the speaker lamp, you can target anyone that is interested in home improvement and even adventure because it kind of looks like a, like a camping lamp. But with a vinyl record, well, the person would have to have a vinyl record player in the first place to even play that. The next factor that you have to consider is whether the product adds value to the market. There must be some sort of value that your customer is getting out of the product to make a purchase. After all, they are trading their hard-earned money for it. How do you know a product adds value? If it alters any of these four dimensions, design, function, price, and time. Design is a unique style or a style that resonates with the customer and is difficult to be found elsewhere. This can tap into ego too, that a person has a style that others don't. For example, unlike other portable blenders, this company, Blendjet, has different styles of portable blenders. I've seen portable blenders that are half the price of a Blendjet, but I can see how people would still love to buy from Blendjet because the designs of the portable blender are not available anywhere else. Like this panther pattern design, it can't be found in other portable blender stores. Also, the designs of Blendjet are modern, unique, and some even trendy. The function of the product is another way of adding value, by solving a problem with its feature. This can tap into an aching pain point they are having, make their life more convenient, and save them time. A great example would be kitchen tools, like kitchen slicers. However, everyone knows how time-consuming cooking can be, and simple kitchen slicers help save one's time, energy, and just makes everything more convenient. Another huge example would be cosmetics, skincare products, or any other beauty product, as their function is to make a person prettier or alter and perhaps improve the appearance of a person in some way. Price is also a way for you to create value for others. After all, people buy products based on its perceived value or the value they think the product is worth. You can choose to compete on being the lowest priced, which can potentially be a race to the bottom, or you can compete in terms of perceived value, whereby you heavily brand your store and make the product feel like it's worth a premium. For example, Timex versus Rolex. In terms of function, they are the same. They both tell the time, but the perceived value is what drives the price of Rolex up. Some of you may say it's the movement of the Rolex, etc. right? If, especially if you're into watches, you know about this, but that's not really what drives the price up though. When you buy a Rolex, you are also buying its prestige, its scarcity, its heritage, and even its generational value you know, passing it down to your children and your children's children. Time or limited time to get a product also adds value and makes it more exclusive. It also causes people to act more quickly to buy a product, which is the essence of impulse purchases. 
For example, Supreme and other streetwear brands have this thing called drops, which basically is a particular time when they release a product with limited stock and is only available for a limited time due to high demand. Some stores take it further by having it only available for a limited time, like the fifth watches, which only releases its product on the fifth of each month for five days, and if you miss it, you lose it. This sense of scarcity increases the perceived value of the product. Another factor to consider is whether the product is proven to sell. Now, although you should ideally have low saturation for a product, it's not always a bad thing if there is some competition as that sort of validates a need in the market. It's like a proof of concept that your product works because people are validating it with their wallets. One method of verifying that need in the market is to check the number of orders the product has with the supplier. You can do that in Salehu Dropship or AliExpress directly. When searching up your product, just sort by sales or orders to see which product has had the highest number of sales or orders. By the way, you don't need to fill this proven need in the market with the same product. You can even come up with a product that complements or improves upon the existing proven product. For example, you'd think that the watch market is already saturated as is. Like there are all sorts of watches already. Why would we need more? Well, you don't have to sell watches per se to penetrate the watch market. Look at this watch winder cabinet company, Underwood London. They sell the storage space for watches rather than the watches themselves. You as a dropshipper can sell products like this Apple watch case available in Sailhood Dropship, which protects your watch just like your phone case protects your phone. Another thing to note is that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. If you see something is working for someone, but the market is saturated or you just don't want to go up against their optimized ads, you can try to think in terms of marketing angles. For example, based on the creative of your competitor, you can tell that the product they are selling, let's say it's a smart thermal flask, is only being targeted to coffee lovers who want to keep their coffee warm. You on the other hand realize that the same smart thermal flask can be used by tea lovers or even mulled wine lovers. This can help you with your targeting when you do your marketing or when you run ads. This next point is so, so important. You will also need to consider this. Does the product have a healthy profit margin? Based on the many dropshippers we have interacted with, most dropshippers aim to market their product by $20 and above or have a minimum 50% gross profit margin to allow their ads to have more budget to reach more people for testing purposes. The higher the profit margin, the better of course, if the high pricing is still within the acceptable perceived value of the customer. For example, this anti-theft backpack, you can try to mark it up for $20, so now the selling price is almost $40. Hmm, but is it within most people's perception of what bags like this are worth? Let me show you how to find that out. To check how high you can price your products, you can just head over to Google, search for the product you are planning to sell, let's say we are selling an anti-theft backpack, go to Google Shopping and gauge what the average selling price of your product is. Let's search backpacks on Google. We can see that the price ranges from $40 to $90. Great, that means we may be able to market up a little more too when we test the product, or we can have two different campaigns, one with a profit margin at $20 and another with a profit margin at $30, for example. No matter what product you sell, just make sure that the profit margin is healthy to you. I'm not saying that you cannot sell products less than $20 profit margin, but less than that seems to be an uncommon profit margin for dropshippers to work with since we have to factor in the cost for marketing and ads too. Note that the thinner the profit margin, the more volume you'll have to sell, and the higher your ad budget will likely have to be to reach more people. This won't be good if you're stuck selling a product with thin profits. Another factor that makes a winning product is the wow factor. Basically, it's the thing about your product that makes it a scroll stopper. It's the quality of the product that is so cool or interesting that people will stop what they are doing to check it out and make an impulse purchase, which is certainly something you will be relying on if you're doing social media advertising. Here are some indicators that a product has or will have that wow factor when promoted. 
First is that it cannot be found easily. It's hard to find at your local mall or, or Walmart. If it cannot be found easily, it's more likely to be a pleasant surprise to those you are promoting to because likely they have not come across your product before or often. The second indicator is that the product or something similar has high engagement on social media. For example, if you check the video section of Facebook and see that it is well received by a lot of people, then likely it does have the wow factor because that's literally what people are saying about it in the comment section. But as much as you want to sell a product that is validated by a competitor's video engagement, of course you wouldn't want to be going against a ton of competitors saturating the market for your product. So just make sure that there aren't so many of these videos of the product that you are eyeing in the search results. Also note that the engagement indicator may not work all the time, especially in the case of untapped products, which basically haven't been tested by anyone. So the only way to see how well received it is, is to test it yourself. Another factor to consider is whether there are any available, reliable suppliers for the product. Once you've found a product, you can now start looking for a reliable supplier. There are a few things that you need to look out for to see whether a supplier is reliable and compatible with you. Here's how. When searching for a supplier, always sort by number of orders so that you can see the suppliers that have a track record of supplying in decent volumes. Check the reviews to make sure that the product and service of the supplier are good and take it a step further by checking how long they have been in business because the longer they have been in business, the more likely they are to be reliable. To do all of that, we recommend you use the Salehu Dropship tool to find the supplier for the products that you are looking for and integrate them to your store. To use Salehu Dropship to find the product that you've been eyeing, search up the product that you are thinking of selling. Maybe you're looking for the night lamp, but want to keep it broad so we can see other lamps. So let's use the keyword lamp. Sort by sales so that we can get the supplier with the most orders and filter by United States because we want to sell to the United States. If you're very much into branding your store from day one, maybe you want to do wholesale, private label, manufacturing, but may also do drop shipping, we recommend Salehu Directory because that's where suppliers like that are and you can even filter by supplier type and filter by location. The suppliers in the Salehu directory and Dropship are pre-vetted, which will give you the confidence that you can sell a product with less risk. All you have to do is find the product and we'll provide the suppliers. Of course, still communicate with the supplier to make sure that their terms work for you. For example, shipping times. And you can do all that from within the Salehu platform, like with the Salehu directory, which even gives you access to the supplier's contact details and lets you message them all from within Salehu. This factor is kind of optional because it is not necessary for the product's marketing material to have to be available online. Because, well, you can always shoot the video yourself. Is it more of a pain in the butt to do it yourself? Yes, but nowadays user-generated content like customer reviews of your product and native content like ads that look more like memes than ads are what seem to be performing well at the moment. And both of those are quite challenging to make from your supplier's material alone. But if you still don't want to shoot it yourself, you can do one of two things. Try to get marketing material from your supplier. Some people sort of copy marketing material online, but that's kind of a touchy topic because you'll need to be careful with copyright, of course, and because especially some content is from big brands and using that is something that you may want to avoid. The other way is to get someone to make it for you. You can hire a freelancer or a popular service provider for dropshippers like viral ecom ads. Starting out though, you may want to really consider ordering the product yourself, especially since user-generated content has been doing well lately. So you can sort of make a video of you using the product and run ads on that. Also, the benefit of doing that is you have full control over the creative process and can shoot the video or photos in infinite ways. You can also take this opportunity to try out your supplier, but if you are impatient, you can always order from Amazon Prime since most dropship products are available there. Whichever path you take to make your marketing materials, the product must have good marketing material alongside it and you are going to want to make sure that it is high quality enough that it can be used for your marketing efforts in your ads, landing page, etc. A list of marketing materials that you are going to need alongside your product are product photos, product videos, and maybe product GIFs in your product pages so that visitors can be more engaged in your product page. 
Another thing to consider is if your product is saturated. Ideally, you are going to want to sell a product with low saturation. To determine low saturation, you will just need to find the platform that you want to sell in and see whether there's a ton of the same people selling the same product. For example, let's say that you want to sell an RFID wallet on TikTok. There are like so many from different brands. So that's an indicator to not sell such a product because my ads will likely get outbid. On the other hand, if I search up an anti-theft backpack, very few results pop out. By the way, it's available for sourcing in Sailhu, so you can check it out there if you'd like. I left a link in the description if you'd like to sign up to Sailhu. Low saturation is ideal because the higher the competition, the more expensive advertising will be. It's not impossible to break into a saturated market, but it can be very costly if you don't have a unique selling point that your competitors do not have. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this type of content and want us to make more of it. Now that you know the product criteria that makes a winning product, you can check out our other video on nine items to not dropship so that you have an idea of products that violates this criteria. Found a product you like but not sure what supplier to get? Sign up to Sailhu. The link is in the description or watch this YouTube video where we provide for free seven dropship suppliers that ship quickly to the USA. See you in the next video.